Hello, everyone, and welcome to session zero of our new and upcoming Monster of the Week game. In this session, we're going to be going over the tone, a few special custom rules we're adding, and our three player characters. Let's go ahead and begin with Margo. Hi, I'm Margo. She, her. I'm the initiate forever and ever, even though I was raised by this dumb organization. My magic is no limits. That means I can basically push my physical capabilities to the max, assuming I roll lucky. I am experienced. I will probably roll very well and will take forever to level up, even though I have a skill already picked out. It's going to be awesome. Other than that, Margo is just kind of a badass who has a, an unfortunate history of chopping off arms. I do like my sword and I like my sniper rifle. And uh, yeah, that's me. Excellent. For reference, Margo has been featured in one of our sessions prior. We're retconning a few little things, which I'll go over in just a bit, but she is still the same person. And for a new character, but not a new player, we have Jay. Uh, hello, uh, I'll be playing uh, Jay, also known as James Newcastle. Uh, Jay is uh, he's an older man, he's in his middle ages, he uh, hasn't had the most pleasant of life, most of it in petty crime, and he has decided to, well, turn over a new leaf, I guess. He likes racing and driving and stealing. And that was, is also his job in uh, the organization, where he mostly picks people off, drives people to places, and go to well, locations he's not supposed to. Um, his uh, ability is uh, quid pro quo, where he um, well, makes a deal with an entity who he is bonded to, to gain maybe a little bit of information at a cost. Jay is kind of like a um, modern-day roughhouse Robin Hood character. He, uh, he has a soft spot for, well, children and the foster system where he grew up, he likes to donate to them, and he likes living a usually calm life with a little bit of adrenaline mixed in every once in a while. Perfect. And thank you for not specifying what you consider middle age to be. I've had somebody I like, try, yes. I try to find you. You mean your 30s? Your <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I'm like, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the fun part. I literally tried to find the definition that goes, yeah, it can be either 30 or 60. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like 30, maybe if we were in the Middle Ages. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, he, for reference, he is like in his late 30s, early 40s. Perfect. Love it. Love I it. I think I specified. But we're going to keep that on the down low. <laughs> yeah. I mean, have you, seen, have you seen how he looks? I Not need to see it closer. Yeah, not close up. He looks a bit younger than uh, early 40s, but I indeed can see. He has a bit of gray hair. I dig. He looks dope. And for our final agent, we have Jesse Carson. Uh, I am playing Jesse Carson. Uh, he, him, and his pronouns. I mean, he actually hates being called Jesse. He only ever introduces himself as Carson. So it's a secret that his name is Jesse, except to the GM. He is basically a supremely normal guy in a world of supernatural things. He's just a dude. He doesn't have any magical power. He was originally like a fence type character where he was kind of plays the both sides he's a smooth talker silver-tongued kind of guy always thinks that he can talk his way out of a situation uh, unofficially he's a consultant for the same company that the rest of them are involved in but uh, officially he runs a bar with a bunch of people I and mean, he's like the the guy who owns it yeah i guess that's pretty much it excellent and then also to clarify uh, let me actually change the name of your token then to Carson. Does anyone, so no one calls you Carson, right? Sorry, Jesse. So, everyone, call, everyone calls you Carson? Correct. Except for this one person that's in my crew. Perfect. So if you ever want to play her, she is the only person who calls him Carson, Jesse. And really, like, you could probably call him Jesse. He just, I think that's just a thing that, you know, people start calling him Carson as like, when he was a fence and then he just never got out of that habit and now it's uncomfortable to be called jesse by anybody that <laughs> he doesn't know fair enough and also to be clear on that one uh carson is the crooked so we have the initiate the oh, crooked and right. the crooked we have two crookeds <laughs> but they're very different they might know each other though not sure indeed Ooh, right that's... Actually, yeah there's a good chance they probably would i mean you own a bar and you probably reach out to contacts all the time right 
Yeah, I am a guy with many connections. That's my that's my skill. <laughs> yeah, if if you haven't met, you probably heard of each other. Yeah, no, he he has. Um, I think one of the things that he has as part of his special skill set is that he is really familiar with the area and the locals. Oh, I'm actually um, so he, on getting that on a level up. He always has somebody that he knows who, if he doesn't know them directly. Uh, he at least knows somebody who knows them. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, definitely. I know a guy who knows a guy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's his motto. I know a guy who knows a guy. Love it. In that case, uh, because Jay has another name, he goes by Blue Jay for oh. uh, the Criminal Network. Oh, he would definitely know. Very or at nice. least know a guy who knows a guy. He said his name was Blue Jay? Blue Jay, yeah. It's his calling okay. card, I guess. Okay. I'm gonna. Oh, he has retired, so you know. Carson will remember this. <laughs> Where are my notes? <laughs> uh, alrighty, and now we shall go over some of the rules that we're changing. Uh, not too many, more so just laying some ground rules and such for the way we're going to be playing out this campaign. First and foremost, unlike our first playthrough, uh, we're going for a much more grounded campaign, very similar to Delta Green, if you've played that before. Because of this, we're not going to be using certain playbooks or moves because they do not fit the tone for our game. Uh, one of those moves, obviously, is going to be casually using magic. It will still exist, but it's going to be a little more dangerous and complicated. And we can go more into that when we actually hit the field. So magic does exist, and the agents know it exists, but it's not necessarily something you would casually whip out. Also, because we're planning on playing a longer-term campaign, it's going to cost twice as much experience to gain a new skill or ability. We're still going to give out experience in the same way. And also, when people do really cool shit, I will probably throw experience their way. So that should help a wee bit. We're also rephrasing the move manipulate someone to just convince. Because sometimes you're just trying to talk to an ally, or you're trying to talk to someone who's scared, and you're not trying to manipulate them, you just want to get an answer. For the most part, for Investigate a Mystery, we're going to be using the flexible option found in the Tome of Mysteries. And something that we are wholly testing, so... We can adjust and see as the game plays out, but so far, tinkering with it, it's worked pretty well so far. We're going to be adding three clocks for each character. These are inspired by Blades in the Dark, if you played it before, and they're used to keep track of stress and corruption. Because of this, we've added two new moves. The first one is called Keep It Together, and that's used to keep track of stress for each agent. The other move, Bring It Together, will reduce stress. So if they were doing a stress roll, they're rolling to keep it together. Whether it be through cool or the thing they're seeing is so ungodly, we're rolling plus weird. Bringing together can be other stats like charm. You're talking to a family member, petting your dog. Maybe you do something really weird to relieve stress. I won't judge. It's up to the characters. The very first clock is going to have six wedges. It'll be for general stress and when maxed out will trigger a panic reaction. The second clock also has six wedges. This one's used to keep track of the PC's emotional state. When that clock fills up, the PC will succumb to a negative character trait, such as with Margot, hers is agitated. When that clock fills, it will stay full, her tough will go up one, and her charm will go down one, until she can find time to relieve stress. Because I'm a moody bitch. <laughs> That's a nice way to say it. The final clock is a bit more mysterious, if you will. It's going to have eight wedges, and will keep track of corruption. I won't go into too much detail because this is just used for special circumstances. Whether our agents decide to dive into weird magic, or they touch a few too many artifacts they shouldn't be palming. To go back to the panic reaction, this has been used for other folk and we're kind of yoinking it because I love the idea. Every character has the same panic reaction to their general stress clock. Flight, fight, or freeze. Everybody has already numbered these. When that stress clock is maxed out, it will instantly be reduced to zero. The player will then roll a d6. The agent will react based off of what they rolled. If they roll a 6, 5, or 4, they will react with their most common reaction, which for this example we'll say is flight. If they roll a 3 or 2, they will fight, and their least likely reaction, a 1, would be freeze. Everyone's are different, and these can be changed depending on maybe the day the character is feeling or we go undergo some transformation of some type. And then, after that, depending on the situation, how hazardous it might be, or not hazardous at all, 
The agent will also receive a number of minus one forward rolls. It might just be one. So their next roll is just minus one. Not a big deal, but it might be two and it might be three. Whatever's happening is absolutely horrific. And essentially, that's it. We're playing Monster of the Week. Essentially, rules is written. Except for those few other little pieces of spice that I decided to add. And I will say, I am very excited to run this. because I've been wanting to do a more down-to-earth horror game for quite some time now. And as we've played with these players before, one being my wife, her sister, and then a good friend, it's going to be gravy. <laughs>